All right, hello everybody. Uh, I just pulled a card <laughs> inadvertently as I was shuffling here, the Seven of Cups. Hopefully I can help many of you overcome any sort of issues with uh, clarity or um, just focusing today because a lot of times the Seven of Cups can show uh, you know, a lack of clarity. So you came to the right place. We're going to have a great day today. Uh, my name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. Great to see everybody. Had some uh, Mercury retrograde energy, not the elemental. Have it right there too this morning with the cameras. So um, thanks for being patient for a second. I had to kind of reboot my system. This is the Weekly Collective. We're going to take a look at the next seven days plus a special topic. And today you guys voted on basically allowing for the flow of intuition, whatever we need to see. And I like that because if there's something that's challenging, it'll still come up. If there's something that's good that we wouldn't focus on, it'll still come up. So this will be a great day to, um, to see all the possibilities. So um, Apollo is in the background. I just took him on a walk. <laughs> He's drying off in his towel there. We're having some Rain in LA. Good to see everybody. I saw the geographical check in with everyone. Let me know where you're watching from and um, let's get started. Uh, I always begin with channeled messages. Channeled messages, of course, come from dreams and meditation today, primarily from dreams. Let me get the slides up here and we'll talk about what to focus on. Then we'll look at that seven day forecast. Um, so today there was a lot of dreams around um, kind of completing something and moving on to the next step. So I feel like some of us are in that liminal or in-between space, which is both magical and frustrating at the same time, right? Because not everything has been laid out. In fact, the first dream that I saw, uh, it's oftentimes when I have a school dream, it's not about necessarily going to school, but it's about um, preparation or a lesson being learned. In this case, it was about needing to operate outside of the parameters of what's expected. So I felt like I was arriving at a class like two weeks late. Sometimes in college, you, you can transfer into a class or you drop one and you pick up another. It was that kind of thing. Um, everyone else was there. I was asking about like the, um, what is it called? The curriculum, not that. There's basically what, what was on the, um, yeah, there's something else that can't come to me right now. But I was like, where can I get the textbook? <laughs> um, and the teacher said, we don't use a textbook here. And obviously this is just dreams here. But what this is saying is this week is not going to be a by the book sort of week. Um, and you're going to need to focus on basically just using your, your practical common sense, your practical skills. Um, and there is a theory, I, I mean, sorry, there is a difference between theory and practice. And I remember, you know, like you can only be prepared so much in school. It's sometimes better to go take an internship or um, get a part-time job and see if you like what you're, what you're learning and, and if this is what you really want to spend time doing. But in everybody's lives right now, you can ask for advice, but at the end of the day, it's going to have to just feel good right here. And that was the main takeaway when I got um, kind of a chance to review this in my mind's eye. So um, think outside of the box, think outside of the textbook solution. Uh, you might have to innovate or explore something new and you're going to be fine. You're, you're more prepared for this than you might imagine. That's why we had the high priestess on that. Then I got a, a quick flash to graduation. Three of Pentacles is basically when you're able to complete something and really be done with it. It, it is, and it's recognition as well, which is good. Um, so if you have felt stuck, if you have felt connected to something longer than you needed to, I feel like right now it's really a question of when, not if it's time to move in a new direction. And more than that, the universe is asking you, um, what is it that you want to do next? And if you don't know, that's fine. That's why we show up here. That's why, you know, it, it's important to kind of take time to, to meditate and get inspired. But, but what you want to do this week is take some time and think, you know, how much, how much time do I want to invest into this next thing? You know, what is it that is still on my bucket list? Give yourself a chance to really audit and fill out your heart space and think, what, what's next? What, what's the thing that gets you excited? I think that's the most important thing. And um, the last one, the last dream that I had was about the personal touch of remembering a name or remembering a detail. Many of you know that uh, like when I was in high school, I worked in a, well, I've talked about it enough. Maybe all of you don't know this, but I worked in a restaurant. And to this day, I still remember certain uh, food and drink orders, like people that wanted no ice in their soft drink or wanted... Um, I used to work in a seafood restaurant, so maybe they wanted, you know, 
uh, and I, were, I was in Maryland, so there were crabs and things like that. So no salt on this, add this, do this. And I remember all of these combinations and um, <laughs> it's taking up valuable space. Uh, I may not remember all the names now, but I did when I was working. But now I remember the orders. And I'm sure if there's other waiters, waitresses and servers out there, you know what I'm talking about. You can still remember, um, especially the special customers that you cared about or the difficult cu customers. You remember what to do in order to make it a good experience. It's nice to feel that. And it's nice also to remember the importance of delivering that even when you're not in a uh, a position where you're supposed to be a server, for instance, just in friendship or meeting people. Uh, like a, a year and a half ago, I moved into this place. I'll probably be moving soon as well. But when I move in, I try to remember names of people on the, like people that have dogs that walk the dogs on the street, people in the apartment that I like. So I, I come up with a mnemonic device. I might put the name in my phone so I can remember with a description. I'm like, I want to remember this person's name. It usually takes me a couple of times. By the third time, I usually have it. Um, so try it. It really makes a difference. People are surprised. Now I know people's names sometimes and they don't remember mine, but that's okay. Um, it's just nice to let people know that you care. So uh, I, in this dream, people were just in a, in a line or a queue and they were waiting to get somewhere and they were just referred to as like number seven. Okay, seven, go over here. There was never any uh, chance to sort of get to know the person or the name. And it takes no more than like, you know, Five seconds. What's your name? Okay. Sally, go over here. <laughs> so anyway, remember that human touch. Sometimes we get um, really pulled into, you know, the day to day schedule and, you know, let's do this, let's do that. And we have to just kind of pull ourselves out for a moment. And uh, you're not just a number and you're not just a number here. It's good to see all of you. And if you stick around till the end, for those of you that give back, I always do call out the names. And that's one of the reasons too. Um, it's nice to to be seen, to be heard. So I see you and I welcome you here. We're gonna take a look now at a seven day forecast. This is gonna help you get just a little bit more granular view of what's going on. So let's shuffle the cards, zoom in and begin. All right, here we go. And if I fail to mention everything that you see here, except the elemental forecast will be for all who are present. Um, so keep that in mind. One other thing that I picked up on in dreams was just the feeling of being seen. It was almost as if people could see um, through you or like they had laser vision. So um, we'll look at areas where maybe that can be helpful or maybe that could be challenging as well when we get into the special topic. I just didn't have time to put all of that in slides. All right, let's get started, folks. We're going to begin with the energy of today, Sunday, if I can get the day markers here. <laughs> so we have the beautiful King of Cups coming through. I love the dragon energy. This is a water uh, sort of serpent, which is great, especially for those of us that are having rainy days like we are here in California. Um, King of Cups, one of my favorite cards for love, for leadership. We were talking about um, possibly needing to kind of step into the forefront, try something new. Um, this particular king leads with empathy, passion, um, uh, also like a lot of creativity. This is a day where you can just put your heart into whatever you're doing. If you don't feel it, don't do it. If you feel it, you can actually get a lot of progress. It's a really good day for relationships, um, healing relationships in particular. If we take a look at what I picked up this morning, um, and now it's even a little bit later as we're doing this reading, um, you know, we had the, the tower and we can kind of put it over top of this. Some of you are really looking at figuring out which relationships are there to last, which ones have the foundation. The tower was reversed. You might be cutting some cords with people. It's making room um, for the ones that you really want to invest in. So this King of Cups is saying if it feels good, if it's moving well, the flexibility is there, um, the reciprocity is there. That's where you want to put your energy. It's a good card and a good day. Um, for matters of the heart. So this is a day to really focus on what moves you, okay? And 
if you are again in that position of leadership tune into how you feel how they feel and um and know that sensitivity we don't see it that much anymore um you know in in leaders they tend to just fight uh, and and it's something i've noticed over a 20 year period um since the turn of this century sounds a, it's a weird turn of phrase but um yeah the past 20 to 25 years um people in positions of power tend to just bark at one another like dogs uh, rather than communicate so communicate with the heart tune into the other person more can be done with compassion than just an iron fist um it it's uh, something that i think everybody could take a note from but the king of cups is a great again getting back into this um good energy for love good energy for creativity and a good day to focus on healing your heart space okay all right so for those that are in Monday, I know that different people are tuning in in different parts of the world. This is just a reminder for you to make sure that you are in a good place emotionally as you start off the day. Now we'll go into Monday. Um, and in Monday's card, we have the Queen of Wands in reverse. Uh, so Queen of Wands in reverse, boss card for sure. Um, sometimes you have to take a stand. And if you need to take a stand, she's going to be your best friend because she's very, very able to kind of like get people to listen. We have Pele here with the, with the volcano behind her. And so this may be a day where you need to get people motivated and get the action started. And um, Pele can definitely do that. Um, it is a card of innovation and passion as well. So if passion is lacking, everything that I just said is important. And that's why we cover it even for people that might be on the other part of the world, because this could be the missing piece. So if you didn't cover it on Sunday, on Monday, you need to really bring that into the fold. One thing that we want to do with a reverse queen of wands is to keep an open mind. Oftentimes, um, you know, there is this sort of, you can put horse blinders on and think it's this way or no way, my way or the highway. And that's the one area where there's a weakness with the king and the queen of wands in reverse. Um, I like that they can fight for what matters. I like that they can put a line in the sand and that they're very good with boundaries and they're they're good at inspiring people, but if they're closed off to potential um, outcome or solution, it could make things more difficult. So keep an open mind um, and also like listen and see like what's going on around you. Really get a read for the room. I think that's uh, super important. Let's see if there's anything else here. Oh, if we just take the this particular illustration uh, and kind of like lean into the volcano. Some of you have something that's been weighing heavily because uh, wands can be thoughts too. So it's been weighing heavily and it would be great if you had a, uh, a way, you really need kind of like a chance to blow off some steam. That's what I'm looking at here uh, before you have an important conversation. Otherwise, when you talk to someone, it's just like this vitriol and <laughs> it's the lava. So you need a chance to like write a draft and don't send it, delete it. Um, talk to a friend and just say, I need, I need to practice this. Uh, talk to your room, talk to your dog. Just get the stuff out, practice once and say the stuff that you know you can't say and then edit it and say, all right, well, this is what I'm actually going to have to say to this person or this is how I'm going to deal with this challenge. That's going to um, make it a lot easier and it's going to sit easier with the other person. And it looks like it'll put you in a good space for Tuesday, which is the uh, Three of Wands. Some of you are taking two steps forward, one step back. You're still making progress, but it's sort of like not as quickly as you'd like. And that's really a quick read for the three of wands in reverse. This one is also challenging you and saying, are you willing to bridge the, gra the gap or the distance? I often mention I like to see active three of wands. So we have one here, um, you know, wish granted. Usually we, we see a person passively standing on a hill waiting for the ships to come to them. This particular individual is like, nope, I'm going to climb that, that ladder, that mountain, and I'm going to get there faster. So if you're willing to do that, you might be able to um, make up for some lost time. There still may be one thing that you see as a setback. You're still treading in the right direction, though. Like I said, um, what did I say? Two, two steps forward, one step back. You're still making one step forward in that. Maybe it's even three steps forward and one step back, but there's a little bit of a, a delay or some friction. You have to keep moving past that and uh, don't give up, okay? This is also a card of travel. And so for some of you, the, the distance could be, you know, 
getting up early so you could chat with someone in a different time zone or doing a face-to-face, -face, somehow bridging the geographical distance between you as well. All right, midweek, everybody's favorite card. <laughs> I say that um, with a little bit of humor. The Ten of Swords. All right, this Ten of Swords is a little bit bloody, but you know, the good Ten of Swords usually are something to look at. We see someone here trying to get on a ship and this person <laughs> removes their fingers. Um, I'm gonna pull the traditional one, but one thing I'm gonna say with that, just because that one is a little bit, um, a little bit carnage on that one, it's meant to be over. We can take it, that much is clear from almost every Ten of Swords. If something has ended in your life, a friendship, a job, Maybe there was a rejection, you really wanted something, it didn't happen. You can rest easy knowing that it's better not to have that in your life than to be dealing with that. <laughs> um, there's a little bit more optimism, believe it or not, in the traditional Ten of Swords, still carnage, but we have a new dawn right behind that individual here. And that really is what you want to focus on with the Ten of Swords, um, is that one thing has come to an absolute and incontrovertible end, I would say, like without a shadow of doubt, but something better awaits you. And sometimes we need that ouch moment to stop, to stop putting energy into, usually it's a relationship, um, but it can also be a, just a call to action to take care of your own health, by the way. So traditionally, it has to do with your spine, spinal health. Um, it can also just be um, acute or recurring pain that comes into your body. And in this one, some of you might have um, carpal tunnel because of the focus on the hands. So if somebody, by the way, there's another thing that we can take away from this card. If someone isn't there for you when you really need them to be, that also is a protection from the universe knowing this is a fair weather friend. This isn't someone that can kind of go the distance. So um, I can find positives even in the Ten of Swords. Usually for the Ten of Swords, it's knowing that something's over and something better is about to begin. And, and it also is usually about as challenging as something can get. It can only go up. And actually, we go in a completely opposite direction from one ten to another, from something that might have been like seen as a rejection to you know, absolute amazing community energy here in this ten of uh, pentacles here. <laughs> And there's also this message here that you're never too young or old. You can teach an old dog new tricks because we have this dog at the center. Um, typically in the Ten of Pentacles, you'll see an old man, uh, a family, a child, and then it's under an archway and you see the tree of life overprinted. In this one, we're focusing more on family, friends, community, which is a part of that. Um, but a lot of times uh, there could be also a hidden opportunity in that group of people too. Uh, it can also indicate marriage and contracts. But... Uh, if you have a chance to network, um, and I forgot to put up the day marker, apologies. If you have a chance to, uh, to network on Thursday, it's a good day to do so. So um, get out there, mix and mingle. Uh, you could be meeting someone that has a capacity to be a friend or a love interest for a long time, or you might meet someone at a, an event that opens up a doorway to another possibility. Great day to deal with money. If you need some, ask. <laughs> so if you need to, you know, if, if we're talking about negotiation or, um, or if there's some sort of resource lacking in your life, this is a good day to reach out to people around you. Okay, good day overall. Really wonderful. I mean, the only challenging day so far and really in the entire week is Wednesday. Um, let's move on to Friday. We just looked at Thursday. So on Friday, this is one of my favorite Four of Wands cards because it's just such a lush illustration. So we have the Four of Wands, we have the marriage in the center. Uh, with this part, it can, uh, card, it can represent partnership, um, the firm foundation upon which you can build something even better. So in business, friendship, and love, you have a great chance. That's why I was getting you to, I was like, get out there, network, you have a chance to meet someone. Um, and again, it doesn't have to just be love. This is also holding space. So in a traditional four of wands, the beautiful couple that we see here in the center is usually in the distance and the wands are there first, uh, like that old movie, Field of Dreams. You have to build something first and hold space and then things come. If you build it, they will come. So create space in your life for this. And don't, um, but don't, don't compromise what you want. I think it was maybe a week or two ago I had that dream where Someone was trying to, it was almost like pointing into a yearbook. Well, how about this person? Or how about to get you to just like date anyone or do anything? Like if you're trying to find 
uh, the, the perfect opportunity or the per perfect partnership. You know what you want, hold the space for that and trust that it will come in. This is an ideal day for any sort of interpersonal communication. So date, meeting, particularly meetings, especially if it's the first time you're meeting someone, uh, the stars align on Friday and you'll have a good uh, partnership there, okay? And um, spend some time with people that you already have in your life that you love and appreciate as well. Let's look at what's coming through. Gosh, this is, this can be marriage or a contract. This can be love. This can be love as well. So things are picking up when it comes to your social sphere, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, especially here. Um, if you can have a face-to-face a, a -face conversation, great. If you need to say, I love you or I'm sorry, you can do that. Um, you can deepen or enrich an existing relationship. Clearly, we have an energetic thread coming through at that end of the week. And um, across the board, I mean, have some fun. Go out. Go out on a date. Meet a friend. See a movie. Um, spend some time with your dog. I don't care. Whoever or whatever you love, put the energy into that. And know also that whether or not you have that second person that appears in this card with you, you're also magnetic. I mean, both, both of these cards are magnetic. Um, so you have a chance on uh, Friday and Saturday to just pull people into your energy. So whatever this was, it was more of a clearing event for you. There needed to be something that um, left your, your general sort of energy so you could focus on bigger, better, brighter, okay? Um, so let's take a look now and see what's going on here with uh, a week from today. We have next Sunday looking pretty amazing, the world. Now the world card is in the reverse state, but the world card is amazing. So this is about expansion. This is uh, the ability to reach new heights. In business, it is distribution, broadcasting, podcasting, um, you know, outreach, all the things about basically getting from a very small group to a very large group. Now, the reversal of this uh, carries with it a couple of notes. If you're traveling, prepare for inclement weather or delay. Um, if you're trying to plan something or, uh, or even just trying to manifest something, that's a better example, start to think about other possibilities or just that don't, don't limit it. It feels like it could be bigger. Also, timelines are, there could be a surprise. So you may think you've got everything ready and then someone comes in and throws something new into the mix. This could also be good news arriving faster than expected. Um, so just be prepared for you know, diff different opportunities and different timelines, um, bigger, better, faster than expected. And um, for some of you also, you're just ready to move on. feels like you might be dragging your feet a little, feet, <laughs> your feet a little bit um, on something that needs to be happening, okay? Let's go ahead now and take a look at the uh, highlights and the lights, and then we'll get into the uh, elemental forecast. So highlight, today's a pretty good day um, for matters of the heart, but I think you have a three-day highlight. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday look amazing. Ten of pentacles, ten, um, sorry, four of wands, and two of cups. Th three of the best cards for just connecting with people. Two of the best cards for relationships. I mean, the only other one would be the lovers. Things are looking good. Biggest challenge will be Wednesday. Um, and we actually see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the recalibration days because of the reversals. Um, but two of the days are really strong. One of the days, self-care, just take care of yourself. I think in the midweek, it's going to be important to really just focus on pulling back a little bit, focusing on what matters, not getting too much in your headspace. Now we're going to look at the elements. We're going to focus on fire, earth, air, and water. This is the only part of the reading that is um, science-specific. So let me pick a deck and we'll see... Uh, what the cards have to say. All right. All right, so we're doing fire, earth, air, and water. All right. We'll begin with fire signs first. All right, fire. You can get a lot done. We have the nine of wands. So typically there's a little bit more fatigue than there is in this card. Uh, this particular illustration is focusing more on using your energy and your planning to kind of target and make the most out of this moment. So 
This one is a very intention driven card as we see it. And um, traditionally the nine of wands features someone who has a bandage around their head, who is very close to finishing something, who may need to um, fight for or stand up for what they believe in. And in the process sometimes feels a sense of fatigue. Um, so today what I would say is take a moment and remember just how far you've come. Uh, take a moment and practice good self care. If you're feeling like recurring thoughts, persistent thoughts, or a headache, one thing that you want to do today is really take care. I was trying to pull the card. Take care of yourself, but um, this card is all we really need to do. Focus on the possibilities, and that's really what this is all about. And um, also get out of the thicket here. So uh, sometimes we mire ourselves down in unnecessary details, and this card is just saying, you know what? It's time to get, get a bird's eye view of the situation. We have that archer there really focusing on what matters and let the rest of the stuff go, including some of the persistent thoughts or fears or anxieties that might be popping up in your head right now. OK, um, you can if you set your mind to it, you can finish something this week. It may take a few days, but you'll get there. And uh, remember what we talked about with two steps forward, one step back. There might be you're making more progress than you imagine, even if there's a potential setback with that three of wands that was reversed. So. Um, take care of yourself, push to the finish line, and, um, and know this, you, even if there is something challenging, you can overcome it, all right? That's for Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Moving from fire to earth, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, we have the Queen of Cups here, which is a nice uh, sort of divine compliment to the King of Cups. And we have all these sort of, we don't really have people in the decks here that I've used today, but um, we have like aquatic animals here. So flexibility and going against the because uh, salmon in order to reproduce go against the stream uh, of the water so you may have to push a little bit to uh, to get people to see what you're trying to do or to understand things i don't believe in forcing but sometimes you do have to show what's the best word just initiative and um and be very sort of um outspoken even though this is not swords, that's what I'm like. Show the passion, show how you feel. When I first graduated from school and uh, moved to the West Coast, I there were some jobs where I would a couple of places. I just went to the physical location and walked to the um, the front desk and I said, can I can I give this to the HR person or can I go and see uh, whoever's hiring or whatever? A couple times they're like, what? And I actually landed interviews, same day interviews, because nobody did that. And this was at the beginning of like the internet. Not everything was online at that point. But um, so yeah, early 2000s. But I, I remember walking into a few places and I landed two or three jobs just by walking into a place smiling, not being, but just saying, hey, here's my portfolio. Here's a couple samples. I'd be happy to leave this with whoever. If there's any open, if anyone can make some time today, I have some free time. I mean, it was bold. I must have been really, <laughs> I must have put on the right kind of energy because it, it worked a few times. Um, and I even got in at like a big software company too for a hiring day just by calling and saying, hey, are you having an event? They said, well, by the way, some of my best jobs have come from cold calls or just going for it. Um, so going against the grain or what's expected when it's positive can be kind of cool sometimes. Now, I think so much has changed over the past 20 years or so, like that wouldn't work, but do something different now too. If everybody's sending the same resume online or putting the same stuff online, it's almost like you've got to change something up. So being unique in your marketing, that's really what it was. I was marketing my skills and marketing myself. There was a good dose of naivete there too, but it worked. Um, so go for it, do something different. This can also just be, pulling yourself out of your own shyness and talking to somebody since, since this is a card of love as well. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. This is a card of, um, it's a fruitful one because the salmon also represents um, abundance and fertility since it's about ready to spawn. So this is a great week to release something. We're getting a little bit of Empress energy there as well. Really good. I mean, love that card, love the energy, a little bit of a push. It's worth putting yourself out there. You'll stand out from the crowd. Okay, um, so that was Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Creative ventures as well, and of course, uh, energy around love and relationships. Okay, let's go on to air signs. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, it's a good week for you. Um, you're being asked to pull it inward a little bit. We have the Sun card in reverse, and this is basically saying, take care of yourself. Do what's important for you. 
create some mo motion, momentum, and movement in your life that matters. Focus on um, your heart as well, even though this would normally be a solar plexus card. Um, the heart also is what amplifies whatever power, energy, or ideas you have. Uh, there could be someone in your life that just requires a little bit too much attention. The, uh, this is normally a baby card. When the baby card is reversed like this, it can be someone in your life that acts childlike or is self-serving or selfish. And so you're going to cut a tie between that and just focus on uh, reclaiming power and energy. Never second guess yourself. Um, and really know that, I mean, there's been a common theme this week, which is around the, um, your charisma, your, your charm, your smile, all of that stuff goes a really long way. So put it out there, put the best foot forward and uh, you have a chance to create some really great stuff. And you might be holding on to something longer than it needs to be held on to. The, the sun card in reverse is birthing energy. So something is overdue. Take care of it this week. All right. Now let's move on to water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Um, taking care of yourself here. We have the Page of Cups. Um, normally a kind of playful card here, the Otter. But when it's reversed, some of you are feeling like maybe there's been one too many social endeavors. One too many phone calls or obligations or whatever. And it's just sort of like, I'm, I'm tired, I need a break, or I need some help. So if you need help, reach out, talk to somebody. Um, uh, lean on some of your friends and, and the people around you. And also don't be afraid to communicate desires because pages are communicators. The, the uh, vessels or cups, it's about the heart. And so communicate what your heart's desire is, is what we can really see here. And don't be afraid to ask. And also do something for yourself too. Um, so there's a lot of self-care this week as we looked at the, the latter couple of um, elements and and I think everybody can benefit from that, especially with the Wednesday card with the um, Ten of Swords. Let me see if there's anything else. Oh, one last thing: uh, if something doesn't feel right, say no. Whether it's love, a job, an apartment, an opportunity, or an invitation, you always have an opportunity to say that's not that doesn't feel right for me. Okay. Now let's go into the special topic, and today it's whatever needs to come through. So while I'm getting, I'm going to go select a deck before I do that. Uh, a quick reminder, everything here uh, depends on your participation and support. So if you like this and, and you haven't hit the thumbs up once, please do that. If you've never subscribed, but you've been a longtime viewer, consider doing it. It's free and it helps the channel. All right, let me uh, select a deck and let's begin for today. All right. I might let the uh, cards decide. All right, let's see. These two are calling to me. Since we're kind of in the energy of whatever needs to come through, whichever deck wants to come through. Highest suit. Okay, Knight of Cups versus Strength. Strength wins. Okay, and Strength is going to be your center card. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully you're doing well. Good to see you.
right, I'll be right back. Let me just turn off something in the other room. fire that was making too much noise all right let's get started here with your catalyst energy and we have wearing your zebra stripes which i like so zebra stripes uh kind of unique to each and in, uh, each individual animal here and today's the day where just like um you know kind of like our thumbprint or whatever it's saying be yourself be your true self and this is also if we look here we see that beautiful triangle right around the third eye um, think yourself out of a challenge or a situation and try to see any potential block as um, a chance for you to just sort of like open up to the possibilities. So sometimes we think ourselves into a prison or into, we paint ourselves into a corner. And this card is just reminding you that um, there's a time, there's a season, there's a reason for everything. And uh, if something isn't working, something else is opening up. Very nicely aligned to the Ten of Swords around Wednesday. This message in particular could be coming through. Um, the zebra can move through it. And those stripes are um, basically, uh, they, they're, they're not stagnating, they're not stuck. So that's the main thing that I get with that. Okay, let's go to the center of the spread and look at two of the most beautiful cards here. Strength and Agape. So the strength card is reminding you in this moment in time, you have exactly what it takes to deal with whatever challenge might be in front of you. Um, and what I like about this strength card is we don't see the two people here or the, well, this can represent a person, but uh, we don't see these two individuals having to kind of like have the tug of war. Normally the woman has her hands in the mouth of the lion and basically things can be done, but it's not always like worth it. It's, it's a lot of energy. And I think some of you have learned that, I mean, I think this is especially true for friendships, but if you constantly have to walk on eggshells or if you have to dance around schedules or avoid an argument, it's just sort of like it's too much energy. Sometimes it happens in, in uh, family circles too. There may be a relative that just is really difficult or it could be a coworker or a friend. Um, what happens over time is it just, it, it kind of, you get to a point where like you've had your fill. When it's family, you still have to connect with them, but with Friends, it might just be like an enough is enough. And that's kind of what I'm getting here. And that's that's what needs to come through. Focus on physical strength. We can read it at face value. Some of you might just be deciding this week to um, take better care of yourself. And it could be as easy as taking a walk, getting better sleep, eating better, uh, exercising. All of these things are proven to do great things for your mind, body and spirit. So this is a week to focus on that. The stronger your mind, body, and spirit, the more you can bring through, the more you can be like the magician, the channel of better things. If you do have that difficult person in your life, you can overcome whatever challenge might be in front of you this week, but there is that larger note of diminishing returns. And so you want to focus on uh, not, not putting too much into something that isn't worth it. And that's the main thing that I'll say with that. Uh, we have agape on top of this, which is just this universal, unconditional, heart-centric love card. And also, it's like love is all around. This is one card. It doesn't matter which position I put, uh, pick it up because they, they made it upright either way, um, for those of you that don't like reversals. So this is telling me not only can you handle things this week uh, in a really great way, but you can do so with love, with kindness, with empathy, kind of the, the things that I was saying I loved a lot about the King of Cups. And I think that's why that started off our seven day spread is uh, lead with love and compassion this week. That's what we can take away from this. Open yourself up to receive love, abundance and opportunity in the high, highest forms. And also really focus on the type of people that you're spending time with. Do they love you and support you unconditionally? And uh, hopefully the same is true, the reciprocated version of that. Really nice way to start it off. And by the way, this is like love with a capital L. That's one of the big energies this week. We can see it up here with the Ten of Cups. Let me take a quick drink and then we'll talk about the uh, King of Cups and the Deep, or uh, King of Wands rather than the Deep Past. All right, King of Wands energy. So first of all, many of you have spent a lot of time maybe overthinking something, thinking through something to a point that it's like 
it's diminishing returns on that as well. So the, I think this is especially true uh, for air signs because I got the sun in reverse. Um, it's a week to just let stuff go. But for everybody this week, I feel like you might be overcomplicating things. And sometimes simply I had to I like I had a health challenge about a week ago and I'm still dealing with some just finding the right person and a specialist and all this stuff. But one thing that I, I told myself is I'll figure this out. It's all going to be OK in the end. So if something is challenging at the beginning, if you set that intention, I'm going to find the right people. I'm going to figure this out. It's not a big deal. Even if you are feeling a little bit of anxiety, it starts to put the energy of solution and progress and possibility into the mix. So today, think to yourself, I'm good. I've covered this. I'm just going to move forward and not uh, sort of get into my headspace so much. OK, you have the leadership, you have the thinking uh, ability to kind of mani uh, manifest and also manage anything that's in front of you. OK. Listen. Really listen. Active listening is going to be important this week as well, uh, because you might have when someone's communicating, they may not be uh, they might sort of like try to use body language or nuance to get something across. So that's the area where you can be more open, I think, in in day to day conversations. But when it comes to do you know your stuff, it feels like many of you have done the homework. So open up to other people's opinions, move on to the next thing and focus on that uh, mantra, which is, I'm going to figure this out. I, I have what it takes. OK. You're being guided this week. I mean, you can I love the iridescence on this deck, but um, this is the big the biggest angelic card that you can get. And there's nothing. It's a very neutral angel, too. So we have like the angel of transformation and the death card. We have judgment, but that's a kind of judgy angel. <laughs> but the temperance angel is just there to help. And it's very loving and very nurturing. So there's subtle guidance and support this week, if you're willing to pick up on it. And I think one of the things here is making time for meditation, for rest, for, you know, not rushing through the things. Temperance is not in a hurry and is not about extremes. Um, the temperance angel typically will have a foot in the water and a foot on the land. So it's testing all possibilities, testing the temperature of things and moving when the time is right. Don't rush. That's what we can take away from this. Rest. Don't rush. And the tuning in piece is important because you have angelic assistance this week if you want it. OK. And uh, the angels, by the way, it can be uh, like guides, your your loved ones, people in spirit as well. Um, so if uh, for some of you that have like a parent or a loved guardian in, in uh, spirit, this is a week to tune in and say, help me see through this. Help me figure this out. And sometimes it, it won't be obvious. I had speaking of Mercury retrograde, like there was some Internet connectivity the other day and I had to call. I'm like, I'm going live tomorrow. This needs to work. Um, and somehow magically, I got like the best technician ever uh, who came out, fixed the problem and said, if there's a problem, here's my number. Text me. I'll come back and fix. I'm like, OK. But I knew that that was actually like guidance from my mom who would always kind of problem solve stuff. And I'm like, thanks, mom. So sometimes it's not an, a direct thing, but you get like the perfect connection and you know that it wasn't just you. There was someone helping you. Um, so talk to those in spirit. You, you can get help. And it also is just great therapy. <laughs> um, so do that if you need to. Now we have an opening uh, energy here with the Ten of Cups here. So many of you might be deciding to spend a little bit more time with the people that you love. The card is reversed. So you may be feeling like I, I need more connection in my life. I need more happiness or I need more joy. Um, take some time for that. Absolutely. Um, Ten of Cups in reverse can also be peer pressure um, to conform to any sort of thing. And you're just going to push back kindly on that. Just say, I know that that's coming from a place of love, but I'm good. And that's the best way to do it. And we do have, speaking of like maternal energy, strength card is one of the like divine feminine and definitely mothering cards in, uh, in tarot. We want to avoid in our own lives stepping in and being too bossy because this is too bossy, king of wands reverse. This is mothering and this is pressuring. So if that's anything that you're trying to do, even if you want to help someone, it's not the best thing. And if someone in your life has good qualities and good intentions, but they're too much, push back with love. Just say, uh, I, know, I know what you're trying to do here, but 
stop. I'm good. Okay. And now let's move on to near future here. Five of Pentacles, if I can keep the card in my hands. Uh, five of Pentacles in reverse. So this is a chance to heal the inner child. So for many of us, we don't, we don't get a chance as adults to sort of just feel things and take care of things. And we've, we have to, I don't, again, I think it's something over the past hundred years or so where it's been so much focus on industrialization and working and showing up and doing all this stuff. And you have to be happy. You have to be uh, on an energetic and an emotional level stable. So if there's anything right now that is bringing you out of your, um, your ability to just feel like you got your feet on the ground, this is the week where you have to focus on emotional and mental health. Many times this does come from parents or the past, um, both at once usually. And what happens is there could have been a, a situation where you didn't get the unconditional love and support that you needed, deserved, uh, etc. And now is the time to basically do it for yourself and just say, I deserve this. I'm going to create the safe space in my life. And I'm really going to look at all of the things that I'm putting my time and energy into. And if I don't feel like I'm, I'm appreciated, then I'm going to move in a different direction. Don't sell yourself short. Ask for more. Um, four and five of pentacles come through when we are trying to trying to make people happy and over delivering, but not getting enough back over delivering energetically. But um, but you could also be not getting enough back financially, emotionally, uh, et cetera. So this is a time to just rein it in. The next card is the six of pentacles, which has the scales on it, which is about reclaiming balance. And the key way to do that is saying no. So hopefully that helps. It does feel like if you heed the advice there, we have vitality coming through here, the ability to feel like inspired basically, and that you can do it. So ace of wands in the upright position is exactly what we see here. Growth, um, abundance, taking something and bringing it to the next level. Um, it's passion, excitement in love and relationships. You want to have the ace of wands that shows the chemistry. If it's not there, then I worry. Um, the the way that the ace of wands is always illustrated in Rider Waite Smith is almost like we see here the universe giving you the wand and saying you're next up in a relay race take this to the next level so one thing that you can rest assured is some work has already been done in past lives in spirit all you have to do today is show up and take that idea that energy that baton and move forward a little bit and each day you can move it forward from there really the tempo of the race is up to you because the temperance angel is saying, just, just finish the race. Just do it well. Do it right the first time and keep moving forward. Anytime you watch a marathon race, I always like, okay, it's, it's fascinating to see like the first two or three people, but it's also cool to see, you know, there might be someone who has overcome some sort of physical challenge and they're, they might be the last one, but they made it or there's someone that's older and they're just walking and enjoying it. I like to see people finishing the race at different paces and see how they feel when they cross the finish line. So that's all this is about. Just finish it. Finish it at your own tempo and your own speed. It, you're not proving it to anyone but your higher self, okay? And at the end of the days, that's basically who you're, you're connecting with anyway. Okay, so this is a week where someone from the past could be coming back. Um, so fire sign coming back. There could be also a karmic energy here. Whenever I have an angel card in a love reading like that, typically it would be judgment, but I'll take temperance today. This sort of creates this past life energy. Um, so if you're looking for love, I see, or if you're focusing on relationship energy, there's something karmic in nature. Guess what it is? It's power dynamics. Um, you're, you're the, what I see here is equal. I, I read the king and queen of wands in love as equal because they're the same suit and gender doesn't matter. So we have equality here. So that's the main thing here is seeing the equality, having unconditional love and knowing that this was the past. <clears throat> the uh, five of pentacles happens when someone just didn't support you the way they needed to. So just really see each other and be very present in this lifetime and things should be in a better direction. Queen of Wands in reverse, bossy. One of the things that you might be dealing with this week is, it feels like there's too many cooks in the kitchen with the King of Wands, the Queen of Wands, and the Strength card. That's a lot of bosses, even the family with the Ten of Cups. Um, so 
you're being encouraged to hold your ground, to have good boundaries, and, um, and just to push back when it's too much. This is a really unusual Queen of Wands. She's my favorite card, but I had to look here a couple times. Um, traditionally, she's in the desert, uh, and she has the ability to create abundance where none exists. And um, so if you've been through a dry spell in anything, work, love, creativity, the cards this week are basically saying you're going to innovate yourself out of that dry spell <laughs> and you're going to be able to step into something bigger, better and brighter. Um, so we'll see if I can. Here she is. In the uh, traditional illustration, we can just see this uh, this persistence and this power here. So the cat representing intuition and being able to land on your feet, the sun representing not just the sun, but also uh, I, I should say the sunflower the ability to grow something in an environment that would not be hospitable to that usually. So focus on your problem solving skills and basically I can do this. That would be your mantra. You can do it. And if you believe that and really follow through on that, you have the potential to make it happen. Okay. So magic, stubborn, persistent, and, um, and the ability to kind of like pull a rabbit out of a, uh, a hat. So I like this queen for those reasons. The cat is a little tame on this one. I like the black cat on the, the traditional one. It just seems like it's a little bit more feral, wild, um, intuitive. This one is a little bit more domesticated. So one of the things that you might be needing to lean on is your ability to kind of go against what's expected. All right, page of pentacles. Uh, I see this person really kind of reevaluating what they're, they're currently in, engaged in. And so some of you are just fig figuring things out. Is this what I want? Does this feel right? And that goes back to the channeled messages where it felt like graduation was at hand. Something was ready to end. And you have to think, uh, how invested am I in this? What do I want to do here? And then you communicate that. The page is a communicator and a receiver. So this is your chance. And I think I even chose like a satellite for whatever needs to come through for the little emoji. So you really need to think, where am I pointing the satellite? What am I trying to pick up? What am I trying to broadcast? And be mindful of that. You can get what you want this week with the page. This is a good card for communicating, uh, especially the lack that we see here in the Five of Pentacles. It may not be like a lottery ticket, but what it can get us is to the Six or Seven of Pentacles. It can bring progress and reasonable movement in your life this week. So speak up. You can do it. And there may be something better if you just sort of tune in. And this is really just about where to tune the satellite. And then finally, and not surprisingly at all, since it was in the uh, channel messages, we have the Three of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles is graduating, learning, it's cooperating. So we have teamwork energy as well. Don't, don't forget the importance of the teamwork this week is what I would say as well. And um, if you set your mind to do something this week, you've definitely got it, right? So let me see here. Let's take a moment here and just kind of look at before I move into the expanded forecast, what really needs to come through. So you're stronger than you think. That's, that's one thing that needs to come through. Compassion and empathy can change things in your favor versus being um, bossy, pushy, or uh, judgmental. And we got a different energy here when it came to timelines and kind of like just basically slow, easy, Calm is what the, the energy is and with love. So the universe is trying to pull this sort of soothing energy over everything this week. You may be met with some bossy people or some pushy people, but we want this sort of cooperative energy. Cooperative uh, cooperation is really, really key here overall. OK. All right. So let's go ahead now and let's move this to the expanded forecast where we're going to look at health, wealth, love and destiny. And um, we're going to start off first with the energy of health, which is your mind, body, and spirit. So we have a card that's reminding you of the importance of tuning in, and it says signs and reminders. So for many of you right now, it's going to be um, important to focus on tuning in. Signs can be subtle. Say that five times fast. Signs can be really subtle. So I, one of the places I pick it up on is in dreams. And I've just gotten really good over 10 years at, at uh, remembering, tuning in, and, and sort of taking apart the metaphor because I practice. Uh, I've seen 
questions in comments, both in the live stream and sometimes also afterwards saying, I can't remember my dreams. I get up, I tap it into my phone or I dictate it into my phone. Um, just like musicians do when they get a thought, you gotta, gotta record that thought. So um, if, you get a, if you see a sign or symbol, use the memo feature on your phone and, re and record it, voice or, or written. The other thing is, I mentioned, you know, little things. Uh, for me, if I see like a hummingbird or a ladybug, those two things have personal meanings for me. And they typically, like the ladybug uh, came through when I adopted him. He's a rescue dog, Apollo. And um, I wasn't sure I was waiting for the approval. And like two of them landed on my hand while I was sitting at a cafe having a coffee. And then I got a ring on my phone saying, he's yours if you want him. Um, so that has a very special connotation to me. And then hummingbirds come through uh, when I'm having a bad day and I'm outside and they come in front of me and buzz for a second and say, raise your frequency. Um, so there are little things like that. So it's not always, um, it's not always what you would normally think uh, when it comes to a symbol. Sometimes it can be nature. It can also be a song on the radio that reminds you of someone that you love, a uh, time that you had. It can be words that someone say that are very unique to their vernacular. And it's sort of like, oh, only my uncle or my aunt or my dad would have said that. So um, remember that. And I think that that will, um, that will kind of help you out when it comes to that. And also the little subtle things are going to be really important here. Uh, you know, when it comes to making a decision, does it feel right? I think this really boils down to your, um, how you're feeling on a, on a gut and an intuitive level as, as well. All right, now let's focus on the cards and see what's coming through from health. The subtlety uh, or the signs and symbols, pay attention to them. So if you're feeling um, a little tiny ache or pain, go to the doctor before it becomes a big ache or pain, basically. Get ahead of it. And um, that's something that I've always done when it comes to health. If it doesn't feel right, you know, stop and fix it. <laughs> All right. Um, I mentioned before physical fitness. It's a great week to get a little bit more connected with that. Um, you'll have to figure out what works for your body, of course, but any energy or investment in that could be really, really positive. There's a lot of healing energy. So health is not just physical. This is a chance to this, this card and this card could be going to a therapist and, and working through that sort of past energy so that you can open up more to this. This is also a very people pleasing card when it's reversed. So make sure you're happy. Your happiness shouldn't come at the expense of others. Being kind and patient with yourself is going to be very important. And I think some of you are just dealing with stress. These are business and bossy cards. So there's a lot going on there and there may not be enough support and that can definitely create some challenge. But I see solution here. And for some of you, it might be going to a different leader or a different problem solver to help you out or leaning on yourself here. Um, and I do see a return to vitality. So if you focus on physical and mental health this week, then there's a return to form. That's the main takeaway. And then if there's something very subtle going on in your body, talk about that with your doctor before it becomes not so subtle. So that was health. Let's move on to wealth, which is your resources, life, purpose, and career. Very interesting card coming through in the Oracle um, card here, the mice. It's not what I want to see necessarily, but we're going to talk about it. So in finances, mice ha carry a different connotation. And I just did a reading for, uh, was it Leo? And this came through. There was like mice on one of the cards, like the magician, actually, I think. I don't know how I remember that, but I remember that. Um, so we can see, think of them as that old sort of like, was it... Uh, the song Three Blind Mice or whatever, putting attention to the details. That's what we can take away here is that something isn't being looked at. Mice as a toad, <coughs> excuse me, mice as a totem are very tricky. Let me take another drink of water and we'll talk about that. Thank you. Um, mice are able to squeeze into extremely small uh, uh, spaces rather. I remember researching them once because they came through in the totem and they can kind of go into, maybe it's like even just like a half an inch or an inch, they just squeeze their bodies. We don't really want to know this, but um, you don't want to let something slip between the cracks. This is about the small details on a contract. This could also be about a financial investment where there's something that triggers 
like sometimes if you have a, a, a CD, a cer certificate of deposit, um, if you don't do something in a certain amount of time, it renews. And if it's like a 10 year one, then you're locked in for 10 years. Read the fine print. That's what I'm really getting here. Pay attention to also where there might be. It's almost like spirit showing me a house where, where the money is kind of leaking or slipping through. So there might be unnecessary expenditures, um, un un unforeseen fees or whatever. And just by scrutinizing the details, you'll be able to see the mice and shoo them out into the wild. <laughs> All right. Um, that's what I get with that. Now let's look at your wealth in three different perspectives. If you're working, looking for work, or um, I kind of group together retirees and students. We're going to look first at those who are working. So you're poised for success. Like strength card is one of the best cards I could get. A lot of love, support, and attention here. What's lacking? Money, time, being realistic. So I feel like this is coming from leadership for those that are working. There could be someone that's pushing something before it's ready and without proper, usually human resources, like not enough people. You can only do what you can do. And you, what you know when it's time to pass the baton on. Also, serve up a better option. This is one of the best ways to say, I, I, want, I, I know what you're trying to do and I, I think we can do that, but I think there's a better path or there might be a different word than better. Say, I think there's another way that we could approach this. There we go. I have to lean back into, I haven't been in corporate work for like 10 years, but you have to think it through your head and not come across too, you know, sort of pushy, but serve up an alternative. Say, have we, you can even ask it as a question. That sounds great. I also was researching this. Do we want to look at this? Have we considered this? It could save us some money. There, you just did it without having to. This is also why I'm not in corporate work anymore. It's so much energy going into communicating stuff um, when it, you really just want to say, we don't have enough people. This isn't realistic. We should do it this way. But that's not going to get the point across in the same way because it sounds very harsh. So I do think it's good to say, though, this isn't feasible. The, we don't have resources. Where are we getting the money from? or things like that. So something there with the bosses, <laughs> you might have to navigate, and I'm sorry for that, but I do see a positive outcome here. If you're trying, some of you aren't getting paid enough. We talked about the despair, you know, like not having enough. Um, and so if that's the case, serve it up, get it in writing, um, and it does look like this is something that can change. So this is a really good time. We're also in the first quarter of the year, um, so just out of it actually. So this is a good time to put into writing something that might take place in the third or fourth quarter. Some, some companies, that's actually the reset of their fiscal year. So you want to make sure everything is, is in writing now so that it can come through. Um, your people skills are good. Your leadership skills are good. You have a great chance of being recognized, but there's something that's a time or energy sink, and that's the biggest challenge. If you have an idea, do something with it right now. Maybe some of you are thinking of the next big thing that you want to focus on. So. Um, don't wait too long for that, whatever that is. Set it into motion. This little sapling needs to be put into the ground. So um, life has a way of speeding past. So take that first step today. All right, for those of you that are looking for work, um, possibly for those of you that are also seeking self-employment, let's see what's going on here. So looking for work, um, I can see that right now there are some options that may not be pay or title level that you are expecting. Um, I do think there's at least one option. I think what's important for actually maybe one or two that are coming through. Don't take something that is going to make you feel like, um, first of all, I think it's not just, it's not just the self-confidence thing. There could be something where the work environment isn't good. Five of pentacles is a place where people, um, they just, they're, it's the number thing. They're treating you like a number. So really pay attention to the culture, the corporate culture, the, the morale, and do some Googling and see if there isn't some, like there's a lot of different sites that show reviews um, and real people's experiences or talk to someone that's worked there. Uh, if it's a big enough company, you might be able to, to know someone and 
just do that extra bit of work. It'll save you some time and energy. Don't take the first offer for sure. Negotiate. You can get more at a negotiation. Like I said, it's not going to be a lottery ticket, but it could be 5, 10, 15% more, and that's good. So push for a little bit extra. You'll be glad you did. And networking is, is important here. The Ten of Cups is typically not coworkers. It's friends, maybe family, um, intimate relations that, that you have in your life. They, they might be able to help you find somebody. Oh, yeah, wait a second. I think I know someone. And they're more inclined to help. But it might be a little bit difficult to ask because that card is reversed. That's, that's the main thing that I'm picking up on with all of that. Okay. Um, if you are looking at self-employment, you might need a little bit more funding. That's what I pick up for those that are entrepreneurs or trying to initiate a new project. So if, even if you have a company, there may be something that leads with as a loss leader. It'll eventually pay off, but it's not at the get-go. And there are several things in business sometimes where you just start and you invest and it's not going to give you something initially, but it may take three months, six months, nine months before the payoff happens. So look at the long term, weigh it out, get some um, financial uh, assistance if you need it. Looking at those that are um, retired. Uh, so for those of you that are retired, it's a good time to be so. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, I feel like there's just a lot of excitement around that. Um, the Agape card is just loving where you're at. Also, you don't owe family, friends, or anybody anything right now, so take some time to, you, to, to do what you want to do. If you want to spend more time with the family, obviously, yes, but it feels like also, this is a very specific message that I've never gotten with these combination of cards, but I see it. Um, there are some of you where uh, it feels like you're being utilized, that's a be better word. People are leaning on you too much for childcare. You're retired, you've raised your family, and it doesn't feel like it's necessary that some of these people are doing it, so say no. I see the baby there, and this is about, um, <laughs> this is a, a child card, and th this is a lot. It's a lot for you. So you can help a little bit. That's great. That's what grandparents do, but um, it, there are times and limits to some of that stuff, so make sure that you're not being taken advantage of. I'm your advocate on that. It's a very specific message for a very small subset of retirees, but that message is there. I can see some fear over finances. It feels like you can make some good choices here, though. Um, so it's just about planning in advance. And um, for some of you, it's more saving for health challenges and issues. Um, I do think that you're about to turn a corner or a new leaf here. So... Let's not put too much energy into the fear. I'm all about preparation. And if there's something that you're putting energy or, or money into and it's not returning it, obviously you'll want to change that. But otherwise, I see a positive shift coming through here. Okay? All right. Um, let's go ahead and uh, see what's coming through now for love. Because I think, oh, students. Sorry, students. Students. And then we'll look at love. Um, for students, what's going on for you? Uh, just a little bit of fatigue. Um, but you're going to be okay here. The Five of Pentacles also has to do with the expense of education, and it is getting worse. Um, if I think back to what I spent for my graduate degree, uh, I did it pretty quickly in two years. Um, but the, this, the graduate degree now would only buy one semester? <laughs> it's either a semester or, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. So, it wouldn't have, it would only pay for one quarter of what I went through. It's gone that, it's increased that much over like 25 years. It's, it's ridiculous. It shouldn't be that high. Um, so I get it. You really have to weigh out options. I'm glad I went for the advanced degree, but, and I, and I know it does help me every day, but arguably I may not have needed it. What I would have done differently in my own path was been, been a self-starter sooner I, I should have just, when YouTube came about in like 2006 or seven or eight, I, that's when I should have just stopped corporate work. I stuck with it like another 10 years more than I should have. Um, so you may need to deviate from the plan because of finances, or you could find a better investment or a better way to find some, like definitely look at, um, what am I thinking, scholarships and different levels of universities. Um, you know, even though the name brand one is nice, it, it's not always necessary. And you can always transfer. So look at all the different options. Be very cognizant of the financial investment and or burden that that could be. Um, so even with my much less expensive graduate degree, I still 
have a very small component that I have to pay off. Like I can probably do it within one year now, but it took me a long time, longer than I thought. So think through that. Um, because when I was going to school, you know, your financial burden may only be like $40,000. Now it's like 400,000. Like you're never going to pay that off. Really think about it and find better ways. Look at traveling abroad, going to other places where you can, you shouldn't have to spend that much on, on your, you shouldn't have to be in the hundreds of thousands. So think it through, think through the finances, make sure you're okay. And um, that's my final message on that. Okay. Now let's take a look at the, um, <laughs> the next thing, which is love. All right. Romantic, platonic, friends, family, all of that. Okay, here we go. Let's focus and let's move on. I see some people kind of stuck on the previous one. Let's move on to the next topic. We're looking at love and relationships. Uh, we have solitude. So some of you may be kind of going into the hermit phase right now, and uh, that's okay. Some of you may be feeling lonely, and that's also okay. Either way, honor your need for more or less when it comes to connections because it feels very much at either end of the spectrum, okay? So um, that's the first thing that I see. And I mentioned when we looked at the magical sort of trifecta of cards, I think it was like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, and we were getting really, really good energy like 10 of pentacles, um, four of wands, two of cups, I'm trying to remember in my head. Um, so those three cards are just showing that it's worth getting out there. Um, because you can make new connections in friendship, love, and work as well, okay? All right, so let's see what's going on right now. And basically, this card is just reminding you, especially like in a space like this, you're not alone. There's different levels of community and connectedness. It's not just about being in a relationship. Um, so I'll leave that out there as well. Okay, let's see what's going on here uh, when it comes to those in a relationship looking for love or single and happy. If you're in a relationship, I really love this, actually. Agape, you can't get better. This is love with a capital L, universal, unconditional love. Uh, what I do get here is two people that are strong and sometimes so headstrong that they argue. Um, the argument looks, I'll take five of pentacles over ten of swords. There's a chance for the ten of swords at the midweek, so be mindful of that. But what we get here is really a wound from the past that's replaying itself in the relationship. Not so much um, a part of this relationship, but like something that came from, again, earlier years. So try not to get into that energy. And one thing that you can avoid is you're not your partner's parent. You don't want to get into the mothering or fathering energy. So love, support, hold space. Don't boss them around um, and let them come to you on certain things. Also feels like peer, pre peer and family pressure could be a little bit higher this week than usual. And that's, again, when you really want to be strong and be there for each other. These are nicely met, evenly met energies. King and Queen of Wands, lots of passion. Um, passion can go either way. It can be, you know, love and, and intimacy or it can be verbal sparring. So let's go more towards the, the tenderness and the togetherness than, you know, sort of like butting heads. One of the things you could be mindful of is health or money uh, and that could be a trigger coming through here as well but the good news here and i said i want to see this in a, a love relationship we have the uh, ace of wands there's passion we just have to channel the passion in the right direction okay all right um i think that's pretty much everything with this could be an expansion of family for some of you um and also just you're going to do fine i think some of you are worried that you may not be able to handle it um, you're going to be a better parent than you might imagine. So if you just started the family, uh, you know, you're not your parents. You're not anything in your life that wasn't what you wanted it to be. You're your own person. Looking at those of you that are looking for love right now. If you're looking for love, a little bit of healing that needs to be done, to be honest. Um, Five of Pentacles is just about taking care of yourself. Could also be a focus on work and finance, getting all of those things balanced out that we talked about with wealth a little bit earlier. Um, and can you find it? Yes, you can. Um, but do you have the time and energy? That's what I'm, I'm looking at here because Five of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, a lot of energy around money, work, etc. But we do have love kind of knocking at the door here. And it's something, it's a very, it feels very physical or it feels very passionate, lots of chemistry. Um, we have the Queen of Wands here, which is similar to you. 
That's what I'm seeing. There's a very sort of lots of commonalities, so much so that sometimes it may be difficult to agree on things, but lots of passion, fire, fire energy coming through. There could be a child already in the mix. So a ready-made family for some of you, and that could also be something that you're weighing uh, if you really want to do that. Um, but that's what I'm picking up on for looking for love. If you're single and happy, um, it's a great time to be single and happy because of the developmental energy and hope spheres and opportunities and the outcome. So a lot of potential with this page of pentacles, a lot of recognition that wants to come through. And, um, and when we think back to the seven day, the end of the week was like the world card. I feel like things, you could be surprised at the timelines, uh, like where a new job or opportunity could come through faster than expected. You're really poised for success. The strength card and the agape card, and then these two boss cards here. So I like what I see. And I think that anything that you want to set in motion this week, you can do. Uh, Five of Pentacles, by the way, this is such an unusual card. I'll bring the traditional one up here. Thank you. It's right there. Um, pay special attention to your feet, um, your foot, your ankle, lower extremity of the leg. Um, on a day today, like today where it's rainy, you could slip. Um, for those of you that have existing injuries, you could just be feeling that a little bit more now than usual. And it may just be time to buy a new pair of shoes. Strange message, but whenever I get like the five of pentacles, we want to look at footwear and support and make sure that you have what you need. Okay. And that's everything for love and relationships. Uh, let's look at destiny. This is your trajectory. We have the shield maiden coming through on this one. And um, it says, make plans and focus. Easier said than done, right? Um, but that is what I was calling to action when we were looking at the channel messages. Something's ending. And we saw that with the Three of Pentacles. Um, and in a good way, like a graduation from a karmic lesson. And now it's a chance for you to decide, so now what? In the best way, not in a pressure sort of way. So now what? What can I do now? What should I focus on now? Where does my heart sort of lead me to next? And uh, how am I going to breathe some life into that? Let's look at a big idea. This is going to give us one thing to really focus on that can help us. So if we miss something, it'll come through. If there's something new that we need to look at, it'll also come through. And we'll have a chance for one more question in just a, a moment after I do the meditation. All right. So... Close your eyes, focus, tune in. What is it that you really need to know that we haven't yet covered next, yet? Okay. So it's time to have some fun, folks. We have the Nine of Cups. This is a card of celebration, typically partying and connecting with others. It is also a card of moderation. <laughs> Everything in moderation is okay. Um, so take some time to have some fun. Don't overdo it. Um, focus on celebrating today something that you've you've been working hard to do um, that sort of investment in happiness and joy is going to bring you a long way and this is also the silver lining um, this is what i would want to see if, if if there was a party this or the three of cups because usually it's a good time to be had it's also an abundance card um, in the same way like in the nine of pentacles she has all of that abundance um, but this one is just warning you to Again, moderation is key. Don't overspend, don't overdo, don't over anything. And I think that's going to be the key thing right now. Okay. So we have two more parts to this reading. The first one is going to be a brief meditation. Uh, I'll look at all the cards and we'll come up with something that can help you release or help you connect. And then we'll do one final card. This is your chance. I'm sure all of you have things that you're going through. Um, if you have something specific that because this is a general reading, I didn't have a chance to talk about then you can ask that question. So um, let me go ahead and grab the uh, singing bowl here. And for today's meditation, uh, I think what we can focus on here, I like the angelic guidance. So we're going to call in the angels. I don't think we've done that in like forever. Um, so we're going to focus on the temperance angel. Um, close your eyes. You can look at this and then kind of keep that in your mind's eye. But Take a nice deep breath, close your eyes, and imagine that you have this beautiful angelic presence around you. Any archangel that you would like, um, call on your favorite one. If you don't know any of the names, Michael is a great start because it's a good protector. Um, so imagine that the archangel is around you and you can just feel these beautiful wings reach around you and protect you. And you feel unconditional love, uh, amazing sense of safety and grounding, 
and simultaneously the ability for your heart's desires to take flight. Now, close your eyes and lean back into the, the archangel's arms and imagine that they hold you and they start to take you to a new destination. They're allowing your heart to expand, your dreams to expand, and they're going to take you from where you're at closer to where you need to be energetically, um, emotionally, even cognitively. So allow yourself now just to glide. Imagine that this week is going to be easier than you thought and tune into the little signs and signals all along the way as that archangel is there walking you through and flying you through the week. Imagine that the angel is placing you down on solid ground, carrying away with it any problems, fears, or anxieties that you had, leaving you feeling refreshed, clear, and open. On the next natural exhale, you can open your eyes. Focus, if you will, now on the final question that you have for me. All right, so depending on what you asked, um, the Queen of Swords is a very straightforward kind of card. It would be a yes, but she's almost saying yes, but like get to the point or take action. She's a very no frills, shoot from the hips sort of energy. Um, she's also super fair. She even looks like justice in this illustration. If there's something that you need to fight for, use your words. Um, get behind it and just do it. And that's basically what she's saying. Now is the time. Let's get this started. Let's do it. Um, the other thing here is about using your voice. So it is a perfect time for you to speak up, to speak out, to create the necessary change or movement that you desire in your life. And um, it's a pretty good card overall. Affirmative, outspoken, direct, to the point. Take a moment, uh, as we've talked about with any of the reversed uh, court cards, just to read the room. Sometimes she can maybe miss that someone might be going through a difficult time or something like that. So always start a conversation with how are you doing? Is this a good time to talk? And then you can get into the conversation. Give them time and space to answer those questions as well. Don't just kind of robotically go through them. But overall, it's a good time to take action and your, your voice and your communication skills have a chance to really make an impact. So it's a good card overall. All right, let's take a couple moments here to say thanks and give back. Um, uh, so first of all, before we get into the sort of like final part of this reading, um, if you enjoyed the reading, and I hope you did, remember to like and subscribe. It's free and it definitely helps. So thank you in advance. Um, you can also join me on social media if you ever need to get additional reminders. I know that Google doesn't always send them out or YouTube doesn't. So um, you can follow me there. It's Nicholas Ashbaugh on all major pro platforms. You can go to my website for all the official links. And remember, I don't offer private readings, nor do I use direct messages. So block and report anyone that does. 
Now we'll sort of say thanks to all those that have given back here. Thank you in advance to anybody that's given back in super stickers, super chat, memberships. Um, all of that, by the way, before I get into the, the one by one thank yous, it does help me with um, basically producing a podcast and doing more videos and just being able to show up. So thank you for being you. Um, I wouldn't be able to, to do all this without you. All right. Uh, so welcome to everybody and thank you for everybody for showing up. I'm going to start off first with um, those who uh, joined as a member or were gifted a membership. And I get questions every single time. You'll know that you're a member because you will get a message from YouTube. It's not a surprise. It happens in real time here. And it's a gifted thing, so I, I see lots of questions. Sometimes I can gift, I can only do 10 a month, and sometimes other people do it. So just pay attention to chat and have your notifications turned on. All right, to all the channel members here, um, I want to say welcome or welcome back to Lynette, YM, Bernadette, James, Epiphany, Sandra, uh, Sabrina, <laughs> Brandy, Veronica, Sapolina, uh, Chris, Christina, Handy, Sylvia. Gosh, we have a lot today. This is great. Um, McCoby, Tracy, Rebecca, Daisy, maybe, <laughs> Leb. Dandy, uh, I can see we've got a lot of gifters today. Thank you so much. Renee, Vanessa, uh, Ms. Arlene, Melanie, and I think that's everybody. Wow, that was great for all the, uh, those that gifted. Thank you so much. Um, in fact, I'll take a moment here and celebrate some of that. So we'll look at those who have had a, an anniversary or um, have given back a little bit. All right, so let's go to the start here. Um, and I don't think I said hello to Seltane, um, who also join before the live broadcast, um, but welcome to them as well. All right, um, let's see, Jackie, or I think it's Jackie, thank you so much for 37 months of uh, membership. Lots of little points in that crown there. I appreciate all of your time and energy. Um, thank you to Muggle1983 for gifting five memberships. That was very uh, thoughtful of you. And let's see, Colette, for, for five memberships that you gifted today, thank you very much. Let's see, Tahoe, good to see you again. A member for 33 months, thank you for your love and support. Um, Lucy, thank you for gifting five memberships. Marianne, thank you for gifting five as well. Let's see who else is here. And um, Marjorie, celebrating 30 months. Good to see you and thank you for that very long support. I appreciate it. All right, let me go ahead now and take a look at those who gave back in the form of super stickers or super chat. Doing my best to see everybody. If I forgot, I know that Dakota has um, announced you and, and said thanks, and I will see it when I do timestamps later. All right, so today, Melinda, pauses in passages. Aaron uh, Galowanski, or no, Gallo, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't say that. It's a Gallo Slink. <laughs> it's a strange uh, username, but thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Marusha Toya Z Tahoe again. Thanks. Thank you so much. And Monica, let's see. Jackie, a lot of people that get gifted memberships also gave back with stickers. I appreciate that. Um, R Slade, Jeannie, Lucy, Monarca. And I think that's everybody. Uh, let me see if I missed anybody in stream here. Bridget just uh, gave back as well. Thank you. And um, thank you, Monarca, for your first super in a live stream. R. Slade for your first super in a live stream. And um, the name that I couldn't pronounce well <laughs> for your third super, I appreciate it. Um, I'm just gonna say Gallows because I can say that part of it. So thank you. And that's everybody. I feel like I got it all. All right, folks. Thank you so much for your love and support. I hope you had a great time uh, with me today. I know that I always enjoy being present here. It definitely helps set my energy in a good space and it gets us all prepared for the week ahead. Um, so if you haven't already checked out your monthly readings, they're on the main channel page. I do daily readings as well. And of course, um, I have my first podcast. I'm looking for guests for the second, so I'll keep you posted. Take care, everyone. Have a good one. I'll see you soon.